So why should we use a blockchain over traditional systems? That's a very good and valid question. Let's look at the 10,000 feet car sharing example. Let's take Bob here. He has to earn money, so he needs to go to work. Quite a common scenario. He could go in a retro way, ride a horse to work, or go by taxi, public transport, or ride a bike. The unfortunate reality is, most likely, he will take a car. Let's assume for a moment that he is going to use something like a car sharing this time. So he is going by car from his home to his workplace, which is a few kilometers or miles away. If he wants to use any modern car sharing, then he has most likely to select a suitable date and time up front in a calendar that gets saved on a server of the car sharing company. They also have access to his credit card, which will be charged at some point, probably once a month. So he pays and he gets access to the car. The car can be unlocked with his phone or a special card and he can go from A to B. That's pretty straightforward. How would that work on a blockchain? One thing you might know already is that everyone has access to the same data. It's a shared ledger after all, and it's public, so everybody can at least read. The car knows if Bob paid something. The car knows via a smart contract maybe for which period Bob paid up front. And the car knows the public key of Bob or a wallet or something. So Bob can open the car using his private key. And then Bob can drive. How would that exact same scenario work in a traditional client server system with the car? The car has access to the internet, most likely a SIM card in some sort of data stick or something. Then there is a central server from the car sharing company. And they have an API and the car needs to fire a request against an API at a central database. So that's very straightforward. There are a few drawbacks that also means the data is stored centralized on a server. Even if it's stored in a cloud or across different data centers, it's still stored in a way so there is a master key to access this data. The users, they have little or almost no control over their own data. It's basically a monopoly running there. And all in all, it's pretty intransparent what's going on. But it has been like this for years and pretty much all services we know from, you know, Facebook to Twitter to Windows updates to your favorite weather API. It all is a request against the server containing some data. How would the same thing work on a blockchain? The car still has access to the internet. It needs some internet. But instead of connecting to a server, it connects to many different peers downloading a database locally. But the car is not just downloading the blockchain, it is verifying on the fly if the blocks are all valid. This is done using cryptography. It's basically maths on steroids. It's part of what is called consensus. What is consensus actually? Take chess, maybe the historical game between Kasparov and Deep Blue. You might or might not know the rules, but anyway, even though the game is already long ended, you can still see at any round if both participants obeyed by the rules of chess. If you see mid game that someone moved an impossible way, you would know that he cheated. And that's really all there is to consensus. And consensus on the blockchain would mean that every participant would run through the whole game again, checking if someone was cheating. So back to our car sharing example, there are a few advantages over traditional client server methods. First of all, it's all keyless. What that means is that because there's a private public key pair, there doesn't need to be any sign up or user ID or whatever you would have in a traditional system. Your wallet would take care of authorizing access to the car. And the car would know itself because it downloaded the latest state of the blockchain. Second big bonus 
is a peer-to-peer -peer payment. You could basically pay the car directly and the car would know that you paid. So you have access and can use it for a certain amount of time. Third big plus, it is all transparent. The blockchain is an immutable ledger and every transaction can be traced back to its origin. And lastly, because every item, every thing has access to the same information, IoT, Internet of Things, can perfectly work with it. The car would just magically know that it has to open its locks, or it can even pay for its own gas eventually. There might be many cars. But instead of a traditional client-server architecture, we are moving the whole database around and give everyone the same data. And that boils down to having the right key. And the key is different for every person. We call it private keys and they generate and control addresses and so on, but that's a different story. The blockchain doesn't solve all problems, especially not now as mass adoption isn't really reached yet. But assuming we will reach it and everyone has precious coins in their wallets and wallets and keys and all of that, then the lamb could start paying for its own electricity. Or the car can let you in if you pay. Or the car can pay for its own gas. Or you can get access to the cinema, where the cinema knows you paid automatically. That's a few years out probably, but that direction is there.